Now here's something interesting that I found on Fox News. Diets with too much meat may cause health problems. It might give you low testosterone. Be afraid! Okay, 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 okay. I have seen uh, these types of articles lately popping up now. I didn't expect them on Fox News, though. But, okay, you know. And, and what's interesting, I find this absolutely fascinating, though. Usually, when there is something that the media tries to push, they will say the scientific consensus, right? The science is established. <laughs> consensus. There's no more debate. But every now and then, they, they go like, oh, we found this study, which is saying something that goes against common sense, but we're going to push it anyway, because the study by one guy, you know? But which one is it? Do we need to wait for the scientific consensus or not? Because I'm fine with either. But um, what, what I find interesting is the idea that you can scare people to stop eating meat. Like, you're not going to do it. Do you know why people eat meat? For two reasons. Number one is delicious and nutritious. Um, so, for example, this study, which, by the way, they don't even link. Like, I can't find the study. I clicked everywhere. They don't show it, right? I, I just got to take their word for it that it exists. And I got to take their word for it that they don't take it out of context. Because a lot of the times I have seen the mainstream media report to the study and they take it out of context. But whatever, you know. Uh, so, according to them, the study has uh, separated the uh, dishes into ones that have 35% of the protein coming from meat and 35% of protein that's coming from plants. And then they concluded that the people who eat more meat are suffering from low testosterone. Okay. Uh, did they account for the lifestyle of the particular individuals? Because that's very important. You know, there was another study that showed the people who eat vegan are more healthy. And they forgot to take into account for the lifestyle because the people who are concerned about their diet are also concerned about their health. So they're more likely to work out. They're more likely to go bicycling, so on and so forth. Yeah, that, that's an important uh, variable that you have to account. I'm not, I'm not saying that that variable can change the study, but like it's, it's important, isn't it? And in this case, I, I can give you from my personal lived experience that the left loves so much. You know, distrust the science, distrust anything. Uh, personal lived experience are the best shit, right? So my personal lived experience was that when I was poor, was when I was working around 10 hours a day. So I would go to the hospital that I would study at the university, and I was working 10 hours a day. I would come home, and I was absolutely exhausted. Like, I couldn't do anything after I was home. So I didn't have a lot of money back then. I had less than $300 a month. So what I would do is that I would buy some cheap processed food that's very easy to cook. Like I would buy a hamburger or I would buy some sausages with some french fries. It took 5 to 10 minutes to prepare. And I could eat once a day and it was filling. So obviously it was a very unhealthy lifestyle. It got me to become very plump. And as I was getting chubby, I didn't feel like doing exercise. And my lifestyle was coming home, sitting at a computer, going to university, sitting down, uh, going to the hospital, I was sitting down. So like constantly sitting, constantly being in enclosed spaces means lack of vitamin D, which lowers testosterone levels, causes depression. Um, so it, it was the lifestyle. But now that I have more money, now that I... Uh, am married, and my wife does most of the cooking, so I have more free time. Oh, now we can actually have three meals a day. That we have more salads. We we got more extra plant-based protein. And since then, I lost a lot of weight. I feel a lot better. I feel less depressed. I have time to go out more. I I take more walks. I do more exercise. And yeah, I mean that that that's healthier. Um, but like again, it, it's not just the food. It's not just the nutrition. It's the lifestyle. And it's the ability to have money and ability to have time. Because again, if you're working constantly, you're working 10 hours a day, you don't have time for exercise. You don't have time to spend shopping. You don't have time to cook three meals a day. And I know it's counterintuitive to say, what do you mean poor people get fat? Because usually like we think the opposite way around. They're like, yeah, we don't live in a medieval time anymore. Nowadays, uh, cheap foods 
are usually what remains from the meat processing industry, you know, the leftovers, like the sausages and all of that, they're very cheap. And if you're poor, then yeah, you're going to buy them. And it's not just meat, by the way. Like, for example, white bread has a very negative impact on your weight. Um, greasy, oily foods, like, for example, French fries, they're very easy to make. You buy an entire bag of them, which can last you for two or three days, and it's very cheap. You throw them in oil, you then put salt over them, and you stuff your face with white bread and those french fries, and it's very nutritious, right? You're not going to feel hungry for a long time, especially if you add some sausage next to it, but it's very unhealthy. And, and notice that even without the sausage, the food is unhealthy. But again, it's cheap, it's very easy to make, so if you're a person that works at an IT company crunching those numbers and you're working for like 10, 9 hours a day, when you get home, you don't have time for luxuries. You might not even eat at home. You might just buy those french fries from a fast food joint. You're not really worried about your diet. So yeah, it is a class issue. That, that's why when you look at uh, people like Elon Musk, or you look at people like Jeff Bezos, right? They're not obese, because they have the ability to get either other people to cook for them, or they can afford to eat food, or they don't have to be at work 10 or 11 hours, they, they can make their own time. Like if they feel like it, they can just go to a restaurant and eat properly because they have the money. So yeah, I don't know if it's necessarily about diets. I think it's more about lifestyle. And I think it's about the abilities of people to get into those lifestyles. Again, like if, if you're a person that's working 10 or 11 hours a day, you're not even going to think about this shit. Like most people don't even think about their health. When they're like that, like all they're thinking about is like, okay, wh what problem do I have for tomorrow? Like my boss is upset. How can I avoid his wrath and make sure that I can still bring money home for the family? Now, that's what most people care about. And even if you were to somehow convince people that eating meat is bad or whatever, you know, good luck with that. Doctors have tried to convince people that alcohol and smoking is bad for the last couple of decades. With, with not that great of a result. People eat meat because it's tasty. I mean, I, I have tried the Impossible Burger, and it's impossible to like it. Yeah, it's uh, it, it, I, it's impossible to even believe that it could survive on a market unless uh, th there were big interest groups pumping money into it with government subsidies and investors that are just pouring money into it. If it wasn't for that, th the market just says no. I mean, I, I see in the shelves, and I was like, Shelves that are completely empty, especially during the supply shortages. But when you looked at the uh, vegan menus, that they were still there. Like you had the Impossible Burger and the other one, I, I forgot what it's called. But like that, they, they, they were still there. Because people don't like it. You know, like people eat meat also for the taste. 